Hello, everybody, and welcome to Full Focus, the cinema-based entertainment podcast where a couple of freelancers come together to talk shop. My name is Mike, and as always, I am joined by my brother in crime, the illustrious, the apparently now royal, possibly? Uh, we're both Irish today, so saying he's Irish isn't going to be appropriate. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Andrus. Robert! Hello. Hello. How are you, lad? Uh, Shalom, That's Irish. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Very good. Uh, this is the uh, the podcast where uh, a couple of guys who know uh, the ins and outs of the independent scene uh, come together and talk about what's going on. Robert being uh, of the, uh, you know, acting, production kind of stuff. And uh, your friend Mike over here used to, uh, you know, hold a boom pole every once in a while. Today, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. But first, I have to ask, Mr. Andrus, mm. how, how are you doing this fine St. Patrick's Day holiday that we have to be recording upon this fine evening. <laughs> if I were be telling you the truth, <laughs> I'd be saying I'm glad to be here. Good. The end. The end. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. You're great. Dude. Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning, absolutely. Yeah, lucky uh, charms. Etc., there we go. Nice. Somewhere over, over the rainbow. rainbow. Wait, that's yeah, not Irish. A pot of gold. <laughs> there you go, exactly. With yellow brick roads and munchkins. It's, it's 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 normal. It's normal. I think uh, there had to be like some Irish people with the uh, Wizard oh, of Oz. Come on, what? dude! Yellow brick road munchkins. Stop it! <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's Ireland. Yeah, absolutely. Emerald City. Yeah, done. Ireland. Done. Stop it! I'm gonna keep coming up with. Keep doing it. Yeah. Keep doing it. Like okay. throughout the entire no. throughout the entire no. episode, let's just bring up references of like uh <clears throat> of uh see I have this tradition where I, I try and find a movie for every holiday. Mm-hmm. And St. Patty's is the only time that I have two that I watch pretty religiously. One being the Boondock Saints. Okay. Um, I, I'm on board for that. And second being uh Brigadoon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh the second one being uh the the um uh the John Wayne classic, uh the uh, the Lonely Man. Yeah. Where, uh, Comes yeah, back. We, we talked about that off air, I think. Yeah, Maybe I think it was so. on air. Was it on air? No, I think it was off, off air. air. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was, you know, it's just a, a good Irish tradition to get yeah. your, your corned beef no, and cabbage I, and your, I, your Guinness. And I, I like to watch uh, Leap Year. Mm. <laughs> Not. Nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to watch The Brigadoon, as I said earlier. It's a beautiful I, film. I like to watch. Uh, 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 what, what is it? What is it? Uh, what's, what's the top I, one? The why, top? Why, why can't I? What? Because because that? of a holiday, and when you were supposed it's, to think about it, it's 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 hard to do so. When oh, the leprechaun! The leprechaun! I'm the leprechaun! Get the fuck out of here! No, no, no. You're right? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Um, but uh, one movie that we were able to see uh, together, not together this time, but uh, we were able to see in pretty quick succession was uh, the latest blockbuster from Marvel. Uh, we're talking, of course, about. Captain Marvel, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's jump into the uh, trailer and uh, find out, uh, you know, what's going down. All right. Trailer time. <laughs> That's a new so little button we can do. Trailer time. I like it. Guys. In that voice that we just heard. Yeah, it'll be done. Sam Jackson. Oof. Beating up old ladies. That's so stupid. <laughs> Stupid! <laughs> Don't beat up an old lady. She looks, she looks great in that uniform, though. Heroes. Honestly, noble warrior here. I mean, Brie Olsen does a great job of capturing uh, the character in this. I think, but we'll talk about that. We will talk about that. Your Marvel life began Studios. the day it nearly ended. With blue blood. We yeah. found you. With no memory, we made you one of us, so you could live longer. Stronger, superior. You were reborn. I keep having these memories. Something in my past Top is gun. the key to all of this. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised they didn't do like a volleyball scene. To be exactly. Honest. They didn't. I, I they mean, didn't I'm play. Surprised. They didn't play into the danger zone yes. at all for this entire movie. And frankly, I'm disappointed. I, I'm very disappointed. Would you like to know what you really are? Oh man. I think I had a life here. What aren't you telling me? You've come a long way. 
you're not as strong as you think. This war is just the beginning. I'm not gonna fight your war. What are we gonna do? I'm gonna end it. Yeah. Aren't you cute? And what's your name, huh? Gary. What's cute? I'll be back. I mean, come on. As trailers go, Andrus, I mean, Jesus Christ, man. That was... A trailer. It was a trailer. And it was awesome. It was super good. So, guys, <laughs> let's talk about Captain I'm not, I'm Marvel. You are. The most. Uh, it's about damn time. Captain Marvel is uh, uh, the latest blockbuster in the Marvel MCU universe. Uh, the precursor to the what what is believed to be the poss- possibly the last film in the uh, franchise uh, with the Avengers. Uh, Endgame uh, coming out mm-hmm. next year, I think. Something no, like next month. Next month. That's right. Uh, this particular. <laughs> Come on, man! It's I next know. month. I'm, I'm behind. We're it. already in that next year. We can talk about this too. We how like here. everything has been so oversaturated. It's, I can't even know what the release that. dates for these movies are anymore. But this particular, uh, this particular motion picture uh, takes uh, the character of Carol Danvers, uh, arguably one of the most popular female characters in all of Marvel comics, uh, as Captain Marvel. Originally published back in 1968, has now been given this new life uh, with, uh, you know, an incredible, incredible kind of a personification with uh, Brie Olsen and a very talented cast with the usual kind of MCU explosive, bigger than life kind of adaptation. Did you say Brie Olsen? Did I say Brie Olsen? What did I say? I said Brie Olsen, yeah. I'm sorry. I think you're... Brie Larson. Yeah, you're confusing another Marvel <laughs> it's character. True, it's true. Who is an Olsen? It is, it is. Mm. She wears more red. Mm, uh, she but, does. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I was happy when I when I first started seeing, uh, you know, the, uh, the the announcements because the uh, the press for this film started at least two years A ahead of production. Ago, yeah. And uh, it went through the entire us- the usual thing where you had, like, you know, social networks popping up, uh, Brie Larson going out and, like, saying, hey, the captain's back or something. Or she'll be- or there's, like, that really uh, iconic picture of her wearing the Marvel Studios uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 ball cap, ball cap mm-hmm. because they weren't sure if she was going to get it or not. This Oscar award-winning, very talented right. actress uh, has now been given the mantle of Captain Marvel and, quite honestly, I don't think you should have given that to anybody else. I think she did a good job. Well, so one of the reasons that we that we talked about doing this particular show yeah. was to highlight the fact that um, she's a female Absolutely. lead superhero in the Marvel universe. Absolutely. Right? And this is coming up right after uh, the, the last episode we did with another strong female character with Battle Angel Alita. Right. So it's now coming to be this a situation where we're seeing this very nice turnaround, especially in the comic, you know, Marvel. Kind in the universe. Marvel world, right. That's, right. Because that's for really DC, we've, done, we've been doing that for years already. Yeah, Wonder Woman was fantastic. Wonder Woman, uh, Catwoman, yeah. before that. Yeah. I mean, I didn't like the story on that one, but I still think that Holly Berry did an okay job. An incredible actress. With what she could do with it, that is. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Are you meowing right now? No, that was a... Mm, uh, okay, good. Maybe not. <laughs> but, um, but good point. It, when it comes to uh, empowering leading women with their own... Uh, you know, solid uh, right. structure of, of of film behind the, their their capabilities. DC has been ahead of the curve in that regard. Well, and and I would even say that Marvel's come close with some of the characters that they've produced in the yeah. other X Men movies and whatnot. Yeah, but that could be argued that's but, more of like but an, it's ensemble an ensemble kind of. Yeah. It is. It is. But I mean, if you look at the new franchise, uh, the the Days of Fu- Future pra- Past franchise. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Mystique has a much larger role in it yeah, because absolutely. of who plays Mystique. Well, the next chapter to come out is Dark Phoenix, and that's right. all about and Jean Grey. And then that's Gray. another one, yeah. right? So, I mean, they've had a lot of really strong female characters before. But this is the first time we have an Marvel actress being the, the, the headliner. Which, okay, so for me, I was really excited about this, not knowing any of the history behind her. Yeah. Right? Probably, so, arguably, one of the, definitely the most the most popular female character in all, maybe even of, that's what I found of out. all comic history. Yeah. But when it comes to Marvel, I mean, Captain Marvel, it, the, the way that the, the story came about, the way that things have been going through in regards to how, uh, you know, Marvel, when it was still just a, uh, uh, a comic publisher, mm-hmm. they were already uh, ahead of the curve in regards Correct. to this. Again, like I mentioned before, 
uh, Carol Danvers' character, like her... She was a feminist in the 60s. That's a- absolutely. Yeah. That was ahead of a curve, for sure. Yeah. And a military woman to, to, to boot. <laughs> Air Force. I mean, yeah. Top Gun before Top Gun, right? Yeah, it's intense. Yeah. So I think that that's one reason as to why... I got so excited when I saw that. When I saw the cast, we have Brie Larson, of course, Samuel Jackson, Ben Mendelsohn, Jude Law, Annette motherfucking Benning. <laughs> and then, of course, it's a little rough because I get disappointed about the entire story structure of the film and ended up. <laughs> I'm so glad yeah. you brought that up right away because I've just been like, let's get licking, right to it. Like in my chops on that one. Let's get right I to it. I was so upset. Yeah, yeah. I was so upset. <laughs> Okay, so um, I, I don't know if I want to go on my tangent just yet. Go right do, ahead. Do I? Do we, I not? We got like, an hour to I fill. Do? We got an hour to fill. Go right ahead and do it. <laughs> so correct me if I'm wrong. I'm watching this, and I'm watching the trailer, and yeah. I'm like, I get a better origin fill of the story, <laughs> of her story from the trailer than, than I did, did the movie. movie. <laughs> is that a problem? <laughs> yes. I yes, think that yes, that's it a is. Problem. Yeah. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yep. I thought the movie was produced extremely, wo- extremely well. Totally. I I don't mind the cast. I'm not a super huge fan of the cast. I'm a big fan I, of everybody in it. So but. here's the thing. I'm a huge fan of Brie Larson. I'm yeah. not sure. I, like again, I'm so conflicted when we do these conversations when it's a story related, like aggression yeah. that I feel. Yeah. I didn't like the story. Yeah. I feel like I feel like in doing some of the research that I've done, they've told uh, a a good portion of her story. Yeah. But I also think they missed the mark. Totally. That's the thing like, we're running into a lot when it comes to you have you have a the character last two here. That we, that we talked about battle of the, they like, have the, ah. I think we have the same problem. You right. have this you have this character that has had decades of of development uh, and it's very, very hard to encapsulate all of that story into just a two-hour block. Well, and and I I don't know if that's if that's the studio's fault, if that's the writer's fault, if sure. who, whose fault that is. Because if I go back in in time, especially with all of the Marvel characters, I feel like I get a really solid origin story from all of those. Yeah, yeah. Like Iron Man was amazing. Captain America, I felt was amazing. Yeah, but they they had they the, had the capability of having more than one film for them. Though. No, I no, mean, this and, is and, they're, no. They're, I they're, get that, but still, Iron Man was Iron Man before anything else. Yeah, that's true. Right? Captain true. America was Captain, Captain America, America right. before anything else. But that, that is that is something true that I think that we we should talk about as well because Captain Marvel is definitely a place setter in between Avenger films, whereas. We were able to with Cap and with with uh with, with Tony Stark, we were able to get like this this separate kind of chapter well, of their own story. Yeah, and I'll, what what I'll say is there's I, a lot of things as to why that's that's the that's the case though. I mean, they're they're up against the clock. Well, and I'm gonna compare this one to Spider Man. Okay, right? I still feel like I got an origin story with Spider Man, even though it was in between the movies. Which one? Thank you. Hey, thank you so much, everybody. Home that's right. Homecoming. Because there's nine fucking Spider Man. No, movies. there are there are. I'm talking about Homecoming. The yeah, one yeah. that's part of the Mar- uh, the Avengers franchise, gotcha, gotcha. right? Um, but yes, well played. Thank you very much. Thank you, which, sir. Which actor? Which one are we talking about? I don't know. Which the, one? Uh, there's two hundred episode one, two, three, four, remember. five, six, seven, eight. No, it's which too much. one? Yeah, no, it's way too much. Um, <laughs> but I, I would say in establishing the new actor in this new franchise, yeah. I got way more of an origin story than I got with this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For which sure. Which I think is still a placeholder in between. Yeah. Um, I feel like the same thing with. Uh, Black Panther. I, okay, I think that's a good point. That's a good point. So why do we have... Why is it that we have a story structure that gives a lot of credence to where the character comes from when it's a dude, and then we have Captain Marvel coming up here, and it feels well, like a bunch I, of... Am I saying that? I don't know that I'm saying that. You're not saying that. I, I'm saying that. I know you I'm are. Saying that. I know you are. Captain Marvel was a bunch of small music videos glued together. That, that goes to that <laughs> entire thing. Each Which, scene, by the way, the music was fun. The, the, music, the, the music, music was great. Was the soundtrack fun. was great. It brought me yeah. back to high school. No, it was totally. awesome. Me too. But the way in which they edited this film, mm, it was right? like cut 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 uh track to like action 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 yeah and the the exposition was not there and the the story that they gave us did not make any sense well, i mean i know we're talking about a woman who has the power of a supernova inside of her and can fly okay it's not gonna be factually accurate i didn't even know that until it happened dude i mean like come on now are you telling me oh wait hold on a second spoiler alerts Spoiler alerts. Are you telling me the Kree military is not going to capture this lady and just use her as a weapon instead of trying to turn her onto their side? Get the fuck out of here. Like, I mean, she's a prisoner of war. 
I mean, you're dealing with like a military that is literally in the Marvel Universe been around for millions of years, and you think we'd be smart enough not to have a loaded gun and to what? To what? Oh, no, do you <laughs> I mean, know what they did? You know her, her little, her little. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the little control patch, thing on her, her neck. neck patch. Ugh. You know what I mean? So here's the thing. It's tired. It's so tired. No, it, it, it is. It is. And and I'm getting also really tired of the uh, mentor betrayal yeah, aspect that, that they're that putting notice, in. Excuse me. Sorry. But yeah. No, yeah, no, no, totally. no. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's just like, okay, how many times can we see this story play out? Why can't we just see her linear story play right. out in the way that it's playing out right. without this this element that's in there, right? right. Now, I, I understand that, that that adds to the appeal of what's going on in the story and yeah. how they're structuring it, putting it together, all of that. But if I don't feel like I know who this character is and I don't give a crap because she's got amnesia, yeah, like I would much rather go in the in the structure that they did with Captain America, see him fight. Yes. See him jump on a grenade literally to yeah. show who he is as a human being yeah. before they experiment on him, before the explosion, before the spider bite, before whatever it is. Yeah. And then see what she does from there with that new element and see wh- how she can triumph over whatever she needs Absolutely. To, to, to deal with in this alien invasion, basically. How, how cool would it be to actually see carol danvers be a real prisoner of war and deal with ptsd we saw deal that with, with iron man so yeah, maybe absolutely. they said maybe we can't go iron man with it's it maybe just... we can't go captain america with it but we're gonna do one of the oldest you know flip-flops but, uh, yeah, or whatever. Fl- yeah 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 but betrayed by your mentor That's scenario thing, yeah. so jude law Come plays on. plays uh yon rog and he's the uh, the mentor for uh uh brie larson's uh, uh, Captain Marvel, and we find out later in the film with uh, some pretty uh, sloppy storytelling with cuts to like you know uh, the things that happened, how she got her powers and everything. That Jude Law's character is actually working for the Kree military in more than one capacity. One being that he was just a regular soldier who was honorable to the Kree Empire, but then secondly to actually keep an eye on Brie Larson's character and make sure that he keeps her in line as this mentor thing. At first, being this, you know, this capable person who cares about her, you think, and who's trying to mold her and trying to be a mentor and teach her how to be a good warrior with these new powers that she has, but ends up being what we've seen so many times before, the actual bad guy. Well, and... and He betrays her, he betrays everything, and then he tries... To amplify that storyline even further, when we do arrive on planet Earth, circa 19, what is it? In the early 90s. Early 90s? Which I thought was fun. Do we even know? Uh, but I think, honestly, that was one good way in which they were able to portray it because they didn't say the actual year specifically. When because it came we to... actually have some movie references in the Blockbuster exactly. video to give us a clue as far as And a lot of audio is. cues as well. Right. Um, so so we don't know the, the specific time that she arrives. Right. Yet she's completely in tune right. with all of the trends. And technically, she thinks she's an alien from another planet. Yeah. And she fits in perfect. Like, I don't... Well, that's... that's they, they didn't necessarily explain that Cree element or the suit element or whatever that is for blending in. Yeah, we're supposed to assume it's her training that allowed her to meld into that. Like, uh... Okay, like, okay. We're supposed to assume that. Right. Did you get that? No, I didn't. I didn't get that's that. That's one of my... That's one of my... I have a huge issue with that. Absolutely. You... I can understand completely how, like, you could argue this is a fan's movie. Like, if you're a fan of Captain Marvel, you know what's going on coming in the gate. But one of the major sins, I think, that movie makers do push through, and again, all all hands off to people who made this movie. I know how. I know well, it's how hard work, it's and very, it, they very did a great work. job with a lot of elements to it. So. But you're not supposed to make your. <laughs> At least in my particular opinion, if it's a superhero, fun superhero movie, make the rules of the universe. Abide by those rules. Make sure the rules make sense. And don't make the, the audience have to work too hard to fill in the empty gaps. And there were a lot of empty gaps in regards to this as to why isn't she completely arrested on the spot? Why did Jude Law uh, decide to take her in instead of trying to kill her and use her as a weapon or something like that? Why did we have like uh, this all of a sudden these, these scrolls who classically in the Marvel Universe have always been the bad guys? Right, being portrayed as refugees now which, in the in the second act of the film. Which who here, are we supposed here, I to think root that that's for? A, that's a great twist on it as far as her character goes. Okay, right. I've been trained to consider them the 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 biggest enemy right. I've ever experienced. Right, and now I'm 
conflict. It I mean, it's too a huge easy. conflict. It's a huge conflict. It was too easy. It was way uh, too easy. I agree with you there. But I mean, we're getting we're getting that mentor flip. We're getting this whole internal right. perspective flip. Where uh, there's just so many things about this that I just. I couldn't get on board as far as the whole story yeah. idea behind this movie. You have to be a fan of this character in the Marvel Universe to really enjoy this film, and that's a shame, I think. So, like, going in for popcorn, I got all the popcorn love, and I, I wanted yeah. from it. It's I a fun it, movie. I, I thought it was really, really fun. Right. The explosions were great. Special, effect, special effects were great. The fights were great, mm-hmm. to a degree. Um, I don't know. There, no. there was just there, there were quite a few things about it that I found to be... Concerning. Wait, wait, keep talking, keep talking. I don't know what to that say. That brings up that brings up another <laughs> point too. My cat was just scratching on the door of our yeah, no. of our studio, and uh, one of the prominent characters in this film is a cat. A cat, yeah. <laughs> or is he? Oh my god! Spoiler alert! Wait, Black Panther Spoiler was in alert. this. <laughs> Did they bring in Br- Black Panther in Stop this? Stop it. Stop. I don't remember. I'm talking about did Goose, they go to dude. Oakland? Was this in Oakland? You're a terrible person. Stop it! No, no I'm not. It's still the same. It's it's the same world. Nick Fury's there. <sighs> You're making a oh. point. You're making a point, and I appreciate it. But so here's the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there's been an alien cat on the Air Force base that had some sort of. <sighs> Are you kidding me? Put an actual point of protection Are for you everybody. Kidding me? <laughs> It was all for the gag, all for the gag to find out how Nick Fury actually loses his eye. So and it is not necessary. It is absolutely infuriating. It is, I guarantee you, it was only so that they could sell little tiny cat figurines with, like, you know, the Captain Marvel action Octopus figure tentacles? Or yeah. No, stupid. <laughs> so no. Let's no. talk about that. No. Let's talk about that. So, uh, okay. Um,. <laughs> The, 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 I, okay. They're punching down. So They're the, punching down. The idea sure. that we get to see a young Nick Fury and a young Agent Coulson um, Super ju- cool. jump um, into the thick of it yeah. with this alien uh, threat impending, yeah. I think is really fun because now we we were basically introduced to both of those characters way back in Iron Man, yeah. right? And in was the same Nick way. Fury in Iron Man? I don't uh, remember. He was, he, Nick, I know Coulson showed up at the very end, and then I think he may have been in the... In the uh, mm-hmm. post credit, at least in the uh, in the post credit stuff, Fury definitely right. Like, came in I, I'm nowhere. pretty sure because yeah, because the, yeah, cause the the I mean it was like 15 years ago, right? So, I can't no. I can't tell me about that it. Far. So, but um, but basically they were there from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know um how you want to qualify that, but uh, to to see them jump in and and kind of get where, a sense of right. their where they came from. I'm glad- ignorance to the threat and yeah. and like it makes a lot of sense for their characters right right where we've seen them and the relationship obviously which is why he has the little pager right i didn't understand why we have a pager in the last that was in the previous avengers film. avengers film right yeah. um a lot a lot of those tie-ins were fun but i also think that it was stupid yeah i'm glad they made him shield agents at first though i would have i would have walked out the theater quite honestly if it if it ended up being like two tough uh la cops and uh, they ended no, they, they up they like, were getting yeah they were already the shield in, organization they, yeah, they were already you know? uh, part of shield but it's 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 one of these things where uh they are trying to i mean like once I, what what i what i think really happened was that they got the rights to make the Captain Marvel film. Uh, they 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 let Brie Larson know what's going on, and she, they were able to work it out with her. Again, an incredible actress, Oscar award winner. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has the capability of being able to carry this part of the franchise on her shoulders. But now it feels like this entire movie is just filler. It's just going back and having Star Wars syndrome. It's going back and seeing like what they've done so far and trying to like use Captain Marvel as glue to fill in these gaps and have these cute little sight gags and everything, which honestly can be fun. But if you really want to have any bit of seriousness in regards to the uh, the MCU, which is what they're going to try and do, the Avengers are going to the the Avenger movies have turned into bummers. I mean, they've been like these serious kind of like war space movies. Oh yeah, no, really heavy. Yeah, very really heavy. heavy. Yeah, and then you're going to try and use this happy nostalgic movie that punches yeah. down as a place setter, and I don't think it's the right way to go. You should have just kept going with the more like fun dramatic kind of route. Well, well so th- I was actually going to say, why not see the story between her and her co-pilot? Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. Her pilot friend, yeah. Maria. Yeah. 
I was under the impression that they were lovers. Yeah, so did I. I mean, is that is that what you got from it? I absolutely did. I mean, the 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 uh, relation. Monica, Monica Rambeau. Uh, no, no, wait, that was the young Rambeau. Uh, we're thinking of Maria Rambeau. I, I think, yeah, I think we're talking about Maria. Uh, let me see. Right here. there, she's a uh, Lash, uh, Lashana. Is that who Lashana that is? Lynch? Yeah. yeah. So I mean. And and I don't care no, whether it, they were lovers or not, but like I didn't get a conclusion right. from their storyline. Right. Why why um the little girl was like literally looking up to her like her own personal superhero. Sure, sure. It made a lot of sense based on okay. And there's nothing there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with with two women uh just being friends, but we no. get but we get and that's not what you're saying. I get no. it. But 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 the point of that is that you have these two people who are willing like Tell like, me their origin story is is where I'm getting exactly. It. Rambo is is willing to go up in an experimental spacecraft with somebody that she hasn't seen in six years, and the only thing we know that endears them to one another are a couple of jump scenes to when they're standing on jets and when they're doing having a couple of having some karaoke matches in a bar. That's it. Literally, that's it. Now, now you're friends. You know, I mean, at least when it came to like uh, Jude Law's character and Brie Larson's character, they had like a training scene and a couple battles together, so we could see. Okay, well, they're soldiers <laughs> in arms. They want to die for one another. Yay! Do the exact teammates. same thing. Take five minutes and have a kick-ass Top Gun montage. Yes. Where Brie Larson's character yes. and Lynch's character yes. are like experimenting with kick-ass fighters or something, right. and maybe they had to eject or something and save each other's lives or something like that. Something that would endear. Well, the, the, the whole feminist idea of what the what the the story is in the comics, right? Why yeah. not show? Like I got that in the montage, and maybe they felt like they got what they needed in that maybe. montage, which is okay. You're women. You're not flying because of the time and the era and what it is, exactly. right? And they explained that pretty well. I mean, they're and talking they, about they, how they explained that really well, and that set up the but entire why not experiment. Let us see up. where that conflict totally. is totally. leading into the plane crash. Leading into the Kree attack, mm -hmm. leading into whatever the threat is, why not explore that a little bit further rather than the cat? Right. That's it's, it's just punching down, and it's using like this. This movie is does for, and I have to give kudos to Marvel for being brave in regards to it because they they were able to touch on the on the on the feminist line a bit and make sure that they understand that female characters in this universe just like women in real life are powerful and they have the capability of doing kick-ass shit and it's she's great she's basically superman she's better than superman dude <laughs> she's better I mean, than superman i mean honestly uh from a power standpoint we can get into that later but uh when they do it like having these little vignettes where we see brie larson fail and get knocked down and have that be like this way in which it crescendos it's to all the a vignette though it is all a vignette which is a little ridiculous to me i don't like it that the only way that we have to really decide to ourselves that this woman, this very powerful, capable woman, has been up against a lot of bullshit and she's able to overcome that, become stronger, is, pre is presented to us in these five-second clips where all she's doing is falling a lot. Well, that's it. That's and, all she's doing. And, and maybe that's all that we need to see because she is so powerful and yeah. she is so confident. But then I'm kind of bored. Yeah. Totally, because we've seen it before. Like, what would okay. be nice is, is if they went into the vignettes a little bit. Who was who was the the staff sergeant that was yelling at her? Who was the young right, boy that was right, making right. fun of her? No, How seriously, really why not? Why not give us an idea of what's, what it's like to be a woman in the military in that era, right? Fighting for something that she believes in so strongly right. that she's putting her life at risk, the life of you know. Uh, whether it's the With testing no aspect of it. Safety. Yeah, no, it's her. And she's not doing it only because... No, because uh, she's a patriot. Yeah, exactly. For exactly. So for so many reasons, right? She's doing um, it for her country. She's doing it for her people, not how only long herself. Were, how long were the scenes in Iron Man when he's trying to figure things out and he's a friggin' genius? The entire first two acts of the movie were just... Were him, him in a evolved. cave. Yes, that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, and, and he they was were, evolving. They were amazing and they were interesting and right. they were wonderful and they were so good. And they were so contrary to what we got in this movie. Yeah, it was just too quick and too many things I, glued together. I mean, I, I, I like the action scenes. I really did. I thought that it yeah, was, let's it not, was, it was let's really not fun. Let's not on it too much. Let's but I missed the story of who she is. And I missed, like, okay, if she is one of the biggest characters in 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 the Marvel respect world. It. Yeah. And respected. Yeah. And, and a female lead and everything else. Why not go with all of that, why yeah. not do a, an, a, a, 
a traditional origin story. Let's Absolutely. see her as a child going through whatever conflict she has against, you know, fighting against the boys and her dad has some sort of impact on her. We got that in like two seconds. We did. And if, instead we got a movie that is competent, but was mostly filled with like morally ambiguous sight gags and punching down when it came to like throwing in like alien races for, for, for jokes and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I, I mean, okay. So there's that. Um, Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah. I, I think he's a really good actor, but I think he's oversaturated right now. He was my favorite. Hey, he was my favorite part of this movie. Okay, so hey, do you think he's oversaturated besides or not? Brie Larson and I. He, no, I. I think he's good. I can't get enough of him, honestly. Okay, I, I like him too much. I'm a big Ben. I'm a as big soon fan. as I heard his voice, I knew exactly who Absolutely. the actor was, and Absolutely. then I'm just like, well, I know who he is. Yep. And I know that they're going to play him as either the villain or the misunderstood person that he is, etc., right, right. etc. Uh, stuff. <laughs> stuff, 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 and things and whatnot. Stuff it's it's one of these situations where he does a really good job of being able to, though, uh, tug at your heartstrings a little bit, I think. Yeah. Like Ben Mendelsohn, like his character, uh, Talos, who is another famous character, a famous villain okay. in the Marvel Universe, uh, as most of the scrolls in the Marvel Universe are villains. There's actually some really good story arcs in which there's an invasion and the scrolls almost wipe out the human race, for instance. Right. But Talos has this weird kind of flip-flop and... The thing is, is that he flips from being the uh, the villain and the Kree military being the good guys to the exact opposite by the end of the movie. Right. And the thing is that I really like about that is that I saw it coming a mile away, but the way in which Ben Mendelsohn acted and portrayed the character kind of... And what's the word I'm trying to think of? Secured it a little bit, a little bit for me so I could see that, okay, yeah, this character could do could do that he could he could fool everybody he and then he and then we could definitely see that he's actually a good guy by the third act and like when ben mendelson goes in when it comes to like you know well, it's uh, the exact reverse of what jude law did exactly but but ben mendelson did it better and okay. i think it's because it probably like you know for sake of the writing and everything talus is, is uh definitely uh seen more in the film but Mendel- but uh, mendelson does a really good job of like handling the camp but still handling handling it in a serious way that allows me to enjoy it. Like when you see him being like this conniving kind of green skinned bad guy, he really gets into it in a way that I think is kind of like the sarcastic kind of balance. And then when he turns around, you find out that, you know, spoiler alerts, spoiler alerts, that he's doing everything he's doing just so that he can save his family Mm -hmm. who have been in earth orbit. Apparently this entire time, Mm -hmm. he does it in a way that I think the character, you can really fall for it. You can really, you know, care for that well, he's character. charismatic he's a, he's a great actor absolutely um i've just seen him in everything, everything i gotcha recently and you know it's interesting too because with sam jackson i feel the same way well sam was just doing the same shtick that he's always done. well right right but there's also that's how we accept him yeah and for ben mendelson being villain 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 switch yeah that's a good switch um, no, that's a good a, a trip i, I understand sure. why he's doing that but it, it was just handled in a very lazy way and it was handled too quickly you know and then i also want to talk about miss annette (laughs) um who i adore as an actress there's something about her that has been has i I think that she's been an amazing talent for so long you can't touch her and and i think that uh that i mean i would i would watch her literally do anything yeah you could be a tape as woman reading a phone book it would be entertaining you could you could uh, but I also thought that she was misused as the 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 supreme intelligence. It seemed I that thought she... that she was wonderful. Yeah, as as Wendy Lawson, um, and and they also made her Marvell. Yeah, which is a uh, counter, which is uh, interesting because uh, originally Marvell was a love interest. Yes, and also uh, a dude. A dude, and it was it was Carol Danvers who was the first to take on the mantle of Captain Marvel, right. who actually happened to be a woman, which is. One of the really cool things about the character and the history of the book. So I, I understand the idea of, of the Supreme Intelligence looking the way that she did based yeah. on how they presented the Kree. Yeah. But <laughs> just to let Annette Benning do a net Do her thing. I, I, don't give her the silly contacts because that was stupid. You you nailed it. Don't, don't give. Yeah. I mean, if, you, yeah. if you're going to put Annette Benning on, on screen. Yeah. 
Don't mess it up with some stupid contacts. Annette Bening is one of those actors that all you have to do... Black her eyes out if you need to. Exactly. All but you have don't. to do is give her bullet points yeah. about what's happening and then just let her, let her do her thing. With this, they had to make sure that the audience knew for sure that the extreme the supreme intelligence was like this godlike uh alien uh-huh. hive mind and yet what was the whole point of right. having her be the supreme intelligence it was somebody that Brie Larson's character could relate to which is why i thought it was stupid to yeah. have her look the way that she looked yeah because why not have her in a flight jacket that's the crux of the thing too like i'm that, so irritated that you these the, the the military the Cree military knew Carol Danvers' story. They knew where she came from. Why would you give her a figure that would have the capability of being able to start that fire? To ask, well, where am I really coming from? Who is this person? I don't remember you. Blah blah blah. Anytime that you give a character who's competent in a Marvel film or any kind of film really that you want to root for, uh, the capability of being able to ask questions to get answers to them. That's going to be what's going to be their mo- their, ma- their main motivation. Not to mention to a huge mystery talking point throughout the characters' conversations. Absolutely, absolutely. Who do you see? I'm not going to tell you. Who do you see? I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. Oh, but it's somebody from my past. Yeah, it's sacred. <laughs> and it's not sacred at all. It's somebody that may have died or somebody that you remember. Everybody knows about going in. It's ridiculous. Who do yeah, you see? Who like, do you see? I would honestly manipulate it so that she thought it was Jude Law, which would make that even more impactful. I mean, it's so for cool her for too. the reveal on what you're the villain. What? That's another thing, too. Whoa, That's another thing, know? too. Or make Danvers, it a Cree. Danvers, or a, a, a scroll. Yeah, exactly. Danvers is supposed to like have her heart broken. Whoa. <laughs> Just push it back down. I did the wrong thing. There, there. you go. <laughs> nice. Uh, technical difficulties, folks, but it's all right. Uh, but Carol Danvers is supposed to have her heart broken by having her mentor, her, right. her, her, her father, brother, lover figure, whatever, uh, do this to her. And we couldn't take it seriously because it happened too fast. Freaking fast, right? And the same thing that we saw in Annette and Annette Benning's char- uh, Benning's character as well. You could see that because of I I don't know what it was, but it, it felt like she was phoning it in a little bit because she's trying to trying to be honorable to the story structure or whatever. You mean but Annette? like, Annette? yeah, yeah, yeah. It just I, seems I, so I, generic. I, I get that because it was presented the way that it was. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't know that she phones in anything. Well, yet. That, I don't know yet. I know, but that's that's what I was talking yeah. about before when it comes to look. Tell Be- tell Madam Benning, <laughs> Madam Benning what the story is about, what Brie Larson's character is going through, mm-hmm. and what the machinations of her character are, and just let the woman fly. Right. Write her into the script and just let her do what she wants and improvise the entire freaking scene. Just do it. It's going to end up being better than what's written here. And why in God's name, if you are in a mental kind of uh, environment universe thing in the third act, why the hell is the Supreme Intelligence actually shooting an actual laser beam or whatever the hell it is at Captain Marvel to try and stop her? In her head? It doesn't make any sense. You have this alien tentacle thing that has a capability to literally paralyze you with your own thoughts, and yet you're going to have the, the, this personification of Annette Benning actually shooting an energy ray at Captain the Marvel. The visualization was dumb. It was gross. It was dumb. I did like the crescendo moment, though, like when sure. she finally broke no, sure, out sure, of it, sure, and sure. that's when the vignettes yeah. were used properly. You get all these quick shots sure, 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 sure. Of, of, of Brie Larson's character being like stomped on and made fun of, and then finally she assumes the true mantle of Captain Captain Marvel. Of all of just, her power. Exactly. Right? And just kicks ass. And it's just, that's but great. That was a good part of the movie. Here's but another issue that I have. It's generic. Yeah. Did she really kick ass? Yeah. Hang on. Okay. Explain no. to me. She's fist fighting people that she's fought for forever. <laughs> How supreme are these beings if she can really <laughs> be the powerful being that she right, is? Right, right. Why doesn't, like, uh, okay, so say all you want about X-Men 3 Last Stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get the true power of what the Phoenix is right. when she's turning everybody to stinking ass. Yeah, they add them. She atomizes them. Oh, what's going on? I don't know. It's probably what test, I did. Test, test, test. No, you're fine. Okay, keep going. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, okay, we get the the amount of power because she's literally disintegrating yes. everybody around her. Yes. Right? Mm, Captain Marvel has probably even more power than that. Yeah, possibly. Like, when you get in the power scale, Phoenix might be a little more powerful, but, like, she's still From up there. From an energy perspective? From an energy perspective, she does has she does have the power I'm of going the sun. To, I'm going to blast you. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just going to do it as a push into a wall. Right, right. And, later, and like, five seconds later, you if, see her flying through space and literally dissolving a battleship by just moving through it. It's like, what the fuck? 
Really? No, that's my point. Yeah. My point is maybe maybe she's really coming into her own as far as her okay, powers like and that. stuff like, like that. that. She's getting and, the hang of it. But here's the thing. Now I'm rationalizing it. If she is You're not enjoying that it powerful, yeah. Why not just? I don't care about care these other characters that were her teammates. Right. I want her to blow them up. Right. Because now, she's got the power and the ability to do so, and they're they're a legitimate threat. Yeah. 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 I can understand. Where is she choosing from. not to? We don't know. That's and my that's point, the problem. and that's why I'm irritated by it. I got you. I think that when you go through and you think about the uh, the, it's just a situation where they. How can I put this? They're supposed to care for one another. And if the reason that Brie Larson's character did not go all out like you're talking about was because she had still some sort of devotion or some sort of, you know, love for these people, add in a little bit of dialogue. All you have to do, which never happened, all you have to do is close up on Brie Larson's face and say, I don't want to hurt you or something like that, something. you know? But we didn't get any of that. We just hear no, flashing. And like, uh, but, but the fight scene, I mean, the fight scene was cool in that regard. No, it, and that's my point. Great. Was cool in a regard, excuse me. Great. Yeah. So we get a fight scene out of it. Yeah, a good one. Wonderful. <laughs> I I I'm still lacking the story. And if it made sense, great. Yeah. Great. I'm gonna just I'm gonna bat you around like like a little baseball bat. Right. You know, plastic bat. Boop, 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 right, boop, right, right. boop. You know, move I mean uh, it had it had its moments. It had its moments. Like when they finally fell back to Earth and it was again Jude Law. And, uh, and, and Brie Larson, they're about to go mano a mano. That made sense. That made sense. And he went back to his original kind of uh, line of, you know, I want you to be your full potential without the use of this this magic or whatever right. that we gave you. Right. And then she's like, no, I got this power. And then she she plops him. She just shoots him with another energy ray. It doesn't kill him, but, you know, it just well, uses him as an example. Hallelujah. We got we got a Indiana Jones reference. Yeah, for which sure. Which is amazing. <laughs> Um, or if it was done before that, I apologize. I, I grew up with Andy. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so the, it's such a great scene. It is really good. And scene. I, and, and I'm always surprised that that tactic still works, right? Yeah. It really I'm going to posture, us. posture, posture. Yeah. Well, I'm going to shut this down right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. But, um, but I mean, obviously she cares for him. Yeah. She does not. She doesn't want to kill she, him. She's she doesn't very kill him. She doesn't. Yeah. She doesn't. She doesn't do that. Yet in the following scene, she destroys an entire. She destroys spaceship. Yeah. not just an entire spaceship, every living being on the spaceship, and yeah. she doesn't have any any remorse about it. whatsoever. So it, it's it's a little weird. If it, I I find it refreshing that 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 the Captain Marvel is not afraid of killing. I think it's actually necessary. But they never actually show her kill anybody. Yeah, she just shoots people with energy and, and that kind of stuff. I right, and they're like from. a bit get thrown. I, I, I I'll admit though, there uh, the the scene where like she's done shooting the ship, she goes back to Ronan, uh, you know, the leader of the Kree, uh, a, mil- a, sp- a specific uh, tangent of the military force who are like who we saw back in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, who's a main pro- uh, antagonist. Lee in that Pace film. plays him right. exactly, and, and he reprised his role and does a very good job right. for the three minutes that we see him. But I did get, you know, shivers when she stops herself in front of the main uh, battleship right. and, like, you know, pops her fists together and, like, has a mini supernova that dissipates mm-hmm. and doesn't hurt anybody, but she's just doing it to, like, you know, Show them, post. mess with me, and, you're, and, th- yeah. and things will go badly. I would have loved a line saying something like, Earth is under my protection now sure. if you come back here or something, just for, like, a more posturing kind of thing. And also, I do have to give kudos to uh, that last bit of line that popped up where Pace's character was, like... Uh, Leave. We'll come back later for the weapon. And then his, you know, his boy Howdy was like, "Oh, mm-hmm. you mean the the uh, the engine or the 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 energy or whatever it was?" And then he just looks over at the guy and he's like, "No, the it, w- the woman." <laughs> it's like, yeah, hello, like, dumbass. Yeah, exactly. We're talking about the chick standing, yeah, in front exactly. of, floating in front of us. And that gave it like a little nod of respect, which is always appreciative right. when it comes to that kind of shit. And uh, I think that they definitely, I think they definitely did a, a good job of hammering home that hey. She's a she's a woman, and she's just as capable as any of the, her male uh, counterparts right. in the Marvel universe. They kind of like shoved it down your throat a little bit, but maybe that's what was necessary when you're dealing with like the audience that Marvel films usually get. Maybe not. I don't know. There has been some like political stuff popping up with how Brie Larson was, you know, tweeting about uh, not giving, uh, you know. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, not really caring about what critics said if they happen to be like guys or something like that. I'm not completely familiar with what was going on there. So there is like a little bit of political stuff going on with the, with the film and like, you know, the usual kind of social media bull, bull crap or whatever. But I thought that 
even though it did seem like it was really abundant, it might have been necessary to, sh to show everybody, hey, look, women can do just as much as men can. Mm -hmm. Women can be superheroes. That's the way it is. And it's about time everybody understood what was going on in regards to that. Right. I, think, I think it's a positive thing. I think it's a necessary thing. And I think it's good they did it with this with this movie. Maybe not in the way they did it, but ultimately you can't walk away from Captain Marvel not thinking that, hey, you know what? In the Marvel Universe, I mean, as if we didn't already have enough examples, women can kick ass too. And it's, 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 I think it's important to keep that in mind when... You know, when you when you watch this film, it, it's it's a it's a movie that, despite its, how can I put this? Des, despite the things that we dislike about it, when it comes to story structure and the quick and the quick cuts in action, mm -hmm. I I have to give kudos to Marvel to really just uh, and and the and the and the directors and the production crew to just not be afraid of saying, yeah, we're going to make it very prominent that you understand that women are capable of doing this shit, you know, which well, I already knew, but apparently. The message hasn't been uh, pushed out enough when it comes to this particular genre, maybe. But, I don't know. But I don't know how that can be the case because mo most of the, the the super strong characters, like even on the sidelines, yeah. are women. Yeah, totally. Totally. So, yeah, I, I, I think that... But uh, again, like this is the first film that has a, a female lead. This is the only Marvel In the Marvel film universe. In the Marvel universe, right. Right. In, in the Marvel world. Yeah. I mean, when's the, what's the first one you remember growing up as a kid? Uh, Scarlett, uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson's character. Um, oh my god! You know what? Uh, yeah, the okay. Black Widow. Thank oh my you gosh. very much. Blanked. Oh my god! I, I was gonna like <laughs> really abuse you on that one. Um, I've I've Thank got you. I've got Thank some you. going way back beyond that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, is he a warrior uh, princess? Sure, uh, sure. She's not Marvel. But, no, you know. I'm not talking about Marvel. I'm okay. just talking about In general. female. Oh bad yeah, asses. plenty of them. Plenty of them. Tomb Raider is a huge one. Huge one, absolutely huge. Well, we're talking about a Battle Angel Alita. Like I've been reading that manga since the '90s, and that you that, know what I mean? Yeah, it, female, it, strong, hardcore. And Scarlet, Scarlet's been amazing with all of the other characters that she's played. Absolutely. I, uh, man, now that I said that, I can't. Lucy, Lucy was so much fun. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Uh, th there's there's so many other movies out there that that really have a strong female presence mm -hmm. that has superpowers or is very capable of fighting. I mean, salt comes to mind. Great... Wanted comes to mind. Go Angelina. She's, yeah, absolutely. she's leading both of those. Um, even with as cheesy as the Charlie's angels franchise sure. has been. Sure. It's still, it's empowering. It's I would still empowering. I would hope to, but uh, they, now that I'm playing some of the scenes back, maybe not. Um, I, I think though, I think but, though that but this, very strong women, but very, this, very strong. Women. This resonates more because we know what the kind of, uh, you know, the kind of stuff that comics have had given their history. It's always been this thing where you have, uh, for the most part, heroes being male buff sure. guys. Sure. And the women in the care and the, the, the female characters being scantily clad and having amazing powers. Or but... need to be rescued. Yeah, or... exactly. I'm sorry. The dudes are scantily clad, too. <laughs> Come on. It's just like, I think... I think Those it... skin-tight jumpsuits are something else. I'll give well, you that. I, I mean, you look at any of, the, any of the spandex suits that any of them wear. Yeah. Um, sure, if you want to talk about body image, uh, the women with, you know... The, the... Well, they have huge... They have huge... <laughs> everything. <laughs> All of their features have been accentuated. Exactly. And that's because it's they want It's the same for the dudes. Yeah, yeah. I understand what you're So it's from. just like, I understand that that's an issue. And, but, and it is it is a relevant issue. Yeah, yeah. But from my perspective, I'm just like, great that they chose this movie to, to, to stand on their soapbox about. Yeah. But I mean, again, we've seen it before. We've seen Catwoman. We've seen other... Comic adaptations, other comic adaptations yeah. that have had a lead female. I just think that because Marvel is arguably the biggest comic uh, uh, production sure. studio in history, and they haven't uh, had a very uh, lengthy history for equal representation, arguably. I mean, in the past, especially since Scarlett Joe has been there from the beginning yeah. too, and they yeah. haven't given it hers yet. Oh, you know, she's the, way the, overdue, she's way, way overdue, overdue for. And a movie. I think she is. I yeah. think I think they're doing that. But, but it, it, it's definitely a situation where you have to keep in mind, like where these particular characters are coming from, and right. the history of the franchise and the history of the company that that made them. And unfortunately, uh, this movie suffers from that a little bit because. Uh, you you can't you can't watch this movie without knowing. Uh, do you think they rushed it? I do. Yeah. Okay. I do. And I think I think honestly the entire the entire rushed it fifteen years too late. <laughs> <laughs> I think that when it comes to 
I think I think that they're the the the, pro- the production staff, uh, Marvel uh, and just just the uh, the associated studios are just trying to, you know, put a cork on the bottle finally. And I think that now they just want to burn whatever fuel they have left, end on a good note, and then just take whatever money they can and keep producing like these side franchises and doing what they can, because it's getting to the point now where we're getting a, a new Marvel film every year, a few Marvel films Several every year. Several within. Right? Yeah. And about, it's a great cash cow, mm-hmm. but I hate to say it, but you can only, you can only, you know, hit a dead horse so many times. It's, well, we, we know what's going to happen in the next Avengers. Well, film. so we here, gonna... here's the thing. She's, she's the, this movie is a really good tie in to the, uh, Marvel. Yeah, or, uh, for the uh, Avengers. Well, it's movies. not the thing is, is that honestly, I hate to say it because I like this. Well, because movie. they have it's, to introduce her. Well, they don't have to. They they did it because Captain Marvel was another way in which they could expand the universe, but also make a profit doing it. Sure. Without Captain Marvel, the entire MCU storyline, the timeline doesn't suffer. You no, could, I'm you not could, talking about that. Okay. I'm, I'm talking about to really understand how powerful she is in the Avengers franchise. I think you have to at least give her 15 minutes right. in the movie to the upcoming Avengers and right, movie right, right. Um, I'm to, saying, to do I'm, her justice, right? I'm, I'm saying that like, I, I love it that this movie exists. Sure. I, could, I think it could have been done better. I'm not exactly sure how. It does feel rushed, but ultimately it's not necessary for the survival of the franchise, but Marvel franchise. No, no, understood, Avengers franchise, understood, you know because I mean? they did the same thing with Black Panther. They also did the same thing yes. with, um, I would say, Spider-Man. Yes, and I'm glad they have it. I'm so happy. I am too. I'm so happy that those I were very, very fun movies. Absolutely, Black Panther, the only comic book related franchise to be nominated for an Oscar for best film, is revolutionary. Mm-hmm. But what did it win? Uh, costume. Oh, it did get costume. You're right. Yeah. Thank you. Good call. <laughs> uh, but it it wasn't. It, it's weird for me to say this because right. I I I am a huge fan of the entire MCU, and once the once everything is done. I plan on, you know, buying the the digital downloads and everything and having sure. this library so I can reference it and watch it any part that I want whenever I want. Sure. And it's very intelligent to have a Black Panther movie. It's a very intelligent to have a Captain Marvel movie because people love these characters. But ultimately, I think not so much Black Panther as much uh, as Captain Marvel. We don't need this movie in order to complete the whole MC Universal vision of of the of the uh, the Infinity Stones and the entire what will end up being a pretty much kind of like, almost like a Shakespearean kind of a, 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 a episodic Magnus that's coming out out of these studios. We don't sure. need Captain Marvel in order to make that happen, unfortunately. Though I'm glad we have it. I'm very happy we do. Well, and if if you look at all of the uh, the other movies, I I I understand they are all male led movies. Yeah. So it's the history of the studio and just and, comic and, books and, and, in general. That's it. why it's so hard hitting. I, really I get it. I get it. Um, but I will say it was fun. It was absolutely and fun. And I thought the acting for what it was was fun. Let's go into that. Let's go into our. We're, we're coming I, close to, uh, to uh, coming up on an hour here, and it's about time we jumped into like our own specialities when it comes to this. I, you, you handle the different kind of things that actors have to deal with. You're in a comic book movie. You have to make it fun yet serious. You have to try and understand what limited information you have about this character, how you can make him believable, and that kind of thing. And also from a production standpoint, this cast is huge. This production was extremely large. They actually used real-time Los Angeles subways to shoot on, and you know getting those permits is a pain in the ass. I'm sorry. It's Marvel. Big, <laughs> big deal. But but um, but speak to not only like like the the if you don't mind the the kind of pressures you'd have to deal with being in a comic book uh, film, especially something like big like Captain Marvel like this, and also like the technical stuff too. I mean, like you have to deal with parking and casting as well as being on the other side of the camera when, when it comes to your profession. Well, uh, for for this one, I thought that the actors handled what they had fine. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't blown away by any of the speeches. I wasn't blown away by any of the acting. And you've been blown I away th- by Marvel movies before. <clears throat> oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, I I would I would say especially the Thor franchise. Yeah. I mean they they bridged the gap of of drama and comedy beautifully. Totally. 
beautifully. And with Ragnarok, and, and I, kind of changed the entire brand too. Right, it kind of saved the entire and, and Thor was, franchise in that I, regard. I thought I really do think that I've seen a lot of really, really, really good acting. Yeah, in the franchise so far. Yeah, in this one, I would say that um, I don't think the ap- the acting suffered. Yeah. They didn't give him a lot to but go But I mean, on. like the Annette Benning Supreme Intelligence bit, she felt, less, it lessened. Yeah, it, she felt it lessened she felt so my my impression of of what the acting was on yeah. this. Uh, I mean, again, I, like, I mean, I could go down the list of all of them. I don't want to do that. I, I just want to say, in general, because I'm missing the story. Yeah. I'm missing those moments even further to be more impacted by it. I got you. When you see, I feel like the moments were great with between her and her friend. I feel like the the moments were great uh, between, you know, the the moment of her betrayal. Yeah, you know, all of those things were really, really well done. Yeah, but I didn't care. I know exactly. It's because the story <laughs> structure wasn't there. Right? It was just cut and paste kind of stuff. I can respect where you're coming from. So, so the fact that I cared about you know Talos and his family, yeah, that implies the acting was was well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, the fact that I cared about her relationship with her friend means that the acting was well done. But I didn't care. <laughs> okay, I can you know, respect that. You, you know what I mean? I do o- know. What over, you mean. Overall, I really didn't. I cared for Tony Stark. Yes. I cared in, in Iron Man 3, the relationship that he had with the boy. Right. You know what I mean? I, I, I cared with uh, Captain America. When he jumped on that grenade, yeah. I was in tears watching yeah, it because yeah, yeah. I was so proud to be an American in yeah, that yeah. moment. I feel you. You know what I mean? There yeah. were so many impactful moments when, when, when he lost his best friend. When There's so many moments throughout right. everything. Thor, Thor Even, when he becomes less of a brat and Thor, realizes that his entire no, world humility, is at stake. Yeah. Humility and like responsibility and, mm-hmm. and even um, Doctor Strange. Yeah. Everything that he went through, the the humbling dynamics in which he had to deal with what even he had the, to uh, deal with. Even the Marvel films that we shouldn't take seriously, like Ant-Man and stuff, where like no, he was the, able to... He, it's about reconnecting with his family. Yeah. Th- this one was such a hard one for me. Because I didn't get any of that. I feel you. I, feel I didn't. You. I'm right there with you. She had some amnesia. What did <laughs> she? She didn't once, from from my recollection, yeah. give a shit about <laughs> reconnecting with <laughs> her family. No, not at all. Not at all. She reconnected with her with her with um, her Air Force yeah. family. But then it happened so quick. She's like, "Oh, but, I think I know you. Okay, we're friends like, again." But. It, I'm sorry. They just blasted through that way too quick for way. me to give a shit. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I feel like that was a big part of it. Now, to to answer the other side of your your question yeah. on that, it's a huge eh, production. The money talks. You think I, so? I really that don't. Was it? Okay. I really okay. don't think it matters. I mean, shooting I really Lo- don't. Shooting Los Angeles at that scale. Man. I mean, you they, they were like they were like blocking infrastructure yeah. to get like this and, stuff and, done. And do you know what? They do that all the time with yeah. big productions. <laughs> with big sure, productions, sure. they do it all the time. With commercials, they shut down streets all the time all to time. watch no the BMW deal. drive by, or the Lexus, or the Ford, or whatever that car was that just drove by. <laughs> They shut it down so that it can be a cool by itself exactly. lone wolf exactly. uh, moment. But, but for for me, meh, money talks. I now, if this was a budget of zero, oh, get the fuck out of here! How did they do, do that? that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Meh. Yeah. So it's good. Um, I like that. I yeah. think I think the sound uh, was uh, was pretty excellent. Yeah, I'm, I thought I'm, that was great. I'm always always impressed by how they make like a laser or something that you see in science fiction and fantasy five billion times mm-hmm. in entertainment sound, new? sound new and sound different every time. The photon yeah. blasts coming out of Captain Marvel's hands were something to behold. Nice. And honestly, the the way that they put in these little creaks and cracks uh, when uh, the scrolls were shape shifting was really cool. You could really like kind of hear like their bone flesh. structure moving. Yeah, and their and actual the flesh m- dissolving and, and all of that. Yeah, very cool. cool it was cool. great. It was super good. And I will talk shit about Goose the cat turning into a tentacle monster but, he, sound, but he sounded really cool so I mean that, oh that's, the, the sound the sound was of dope the was tentacle so cat monster yeah. was amazing the scene where like it eats the other <laughs> the other Kree soldiers and you hear him screaming but you can actually hear him yell going into the cat's stomach like you hear go Ow! or something like that <laughs> it was good that was good I really enjoyed the production regards to that but. wonderful so guys, we're going to uh, probably close on uh, on that note when it comes to uh, the uh, impressive blockbuster, which is Captain Marvel. Andrus, uh, kudos. What kind of uh, what kind of person should go see this movie? That's going to really enjoy it. Do you think? 
Um, somebody that that just wants to go eat popcorn and have a good time. Okay, because I agree. if you're going in for a story, you're not gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but if you want to, like, you know, be impressed, popcorn great, popcorn great. Take your brain out, have a good two hours off, and uh, enjoy what you can. It's a good movie. You should pay to see it. But I mean, honestly, don't expect too much when it comes to the story structure. Just going because you're a fan of the universe and you want to see how things tie in with the overall Avenger plot. It'll be good for you to get it. But anyway, guys, we do really appreciate the fact that you're taking time to uh, you know listen to us drill on a bit. Please. Feel free to let us know how we're going, how we're doing. Pullfocuspod at gmail.com. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on SoundCloud and let us know how we're doing. Did you guys see this movie? Did you like it? Did you like it because Brie Larson is kick ass? Did you like it because Annette Benning can, you know, act out of a paper bag without even trying? Or did you like it because Samuel Jackson was able to uh, be Nick Fury again without saying an F bomb? I don't know, whatever. Maybe he, he should have. He did, though. Oh, he did. He did. I take it back. <laughs> I, but, uh, I, wait, did he? I, I'm pretty sure he did, and they bleeped it out or covered it up with the sound effect or something. But, director's yeah. cut. Yeah, yeah, director's yeah, cut. No, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, guys, we do appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you so very much. Let us know how we're doing. And, uh, you know, as always, keep in mind, we may be wrong, but it's your job to tell us. Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Shalante. <laughs>